Hello and welcome to our study in the book of Proverbs. We are in Proverbs chapter 18 today. I ask you to join me in a prayer. Thank you, Father, for this day. Just thank you for watching over and blessing us as you do. Lord, our heart goes out to those who are suffering in any way today, those who have lost loved ones or struggling with uh, viruses or diseases of any kind. Just bless them, help them, and heal them. And we thank you so much for your holy and precious word. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going on to look at Solomon's sons progressing through the school of wisdom. And it is my prayer that you and I have been progressing through this school of wisdom as Solomon is giving us such great instructions about life, about our relationships, about work, just so many things that we need to take to heart to live better and more complete lives. Let's look at verse 1 as we move into this chapter 18. Whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire, and he breaks out against all sound, sound judgment. This word isolates really is talking about separating, separating ourselves. So a selfish person usually are disconnected from others, and then they lash out at common sense. They're not interested in learning anything new. All they want to do is absorb what they feel is right and best, and they're not interested in anything else at that point. Verse 2 says, A fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. Here's something that I think is very interesting to, to think about as you look at that. If you stop and think before you speak, you won't have to worry later about what you said. Let's go over that again because it, it has such a, a value to us. If you stop and think before you speak, you won't have to worry later about what you said back then. Verse 3, when wickedness comes, contempts come. And also dishonor comes disgrace. Some people cause happiness wherever they go. Other people cause happiness when they go. There's some truth to that too. There's some people that uh, they, they just are so down on themselves and down on life that there's no happiness at all in their lives. And so when they leave, uh, happiness can come back and take the place of, of where they were. Uh, verse 4 says, The words of a man's mouth are deep waters. The fountain of wisdom is a bubbling brook. Wisdom flows from a wise person, just like water flows in a bubbling brook. Verse 5, It is not good to be partial to the wicked or to deprive the righteous of judgment. Do not compromise with an evil person in order to overthrow a righteous person. That is against God's laws for us, and that's something that we need to allow God to take over and control, and we should not partake in any evil plot. Verse 6 says, A fool's lips walks into a fight, and his mouth invites a beating. A fool's words gets him into constant quarrels. They are asking for a beating. I think a lot of times a fool just wants to spout off. They want to say what they want to say. And usually the words that they say are words that are of contemptible nature, and they do cause fights. Again, in verse 7, a fool's mouth is his ruin, and his lips are a snare to his soul. A fool is the source of trouble, and he's always stirring up contention wherever he goes. Verse 8 says, The words of a whisperer are like delicious morsels. They go down into the inner parts of the body. And we're talking here about a person who rumors and they whisper into your ear. I want to tell you something, but you have to promise you won't tell anybody else. And those rumors are dainty morsels. And they, those morsels sink deep into one's heart and can cause so much problems, so much pain and heartbreak. Verse 9. Whoever is slack in his work is a brother to him who destroys. Talking about a lazy person. A lazy person is just as bad as someone who wants to cause destruction because they, they're no good. They don't do anything. They don't uh, have a worthy thing that they uh, contribute. Verse 10. And I've marked this one. I think this is a good verse for us all to remember. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man runs into it and is safe. And I think this verse speaks of the security 
that you and I as believers in the Lord Jesus have in Him. And it reminds us that no one can take us away from His arms. He is our strong tower and His righteous people. And remember, we are not righteous in our own behalf, but we are righteous because we have taken on the righteousness of Christ. And as we run to our Lord, He will keep us safe. Verse 11 says, A rich man's wealth is his strong city, and like a high wall in his imagination. In the mind of a wealthy person is the belief that their wealth is, will protect them at all times, and that's, that's not true. We can only find true protection, just like verse 10 said, when we run into the arms of our Lord. Verse 12 says, Before destruction a man's heart is haughty, but humility comes before honor. A prideful person believes that he or she is indestructible, where a humble person realizes they don't deserve anything, and that is what brings forth the honor that they can receive uh, from the Lord. Verse 13, If one gives an answer before he hears, it is his folly and shame. This talks about a person who spouts off before they even listen to the facts. They've already made a decision and an assumption as far as what is there without ever looking at anything else. And it is always shameful and foolish. 14 says, A man's spirit will endure sickness, but a crushed spirit who can bear. I think this talks about a, a person with a vibrant spirit. They can endure even a broken body, problems health-related issues, whatever it might be. But if you have a crushed spirit, you have no strength in which to endure. 15 says, An intelligent heart acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. A wise and understanding person is always open to learn more. Where a fool or someone who is prideful thinks they already know it all, they're not interested in learning anything else. So an intelligent man is a wise man. 16 says, A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before the great. The giving of a gift can open doors to important people. I think is what this is talking about. So we need to always be giving people because you never know when it might open a, a door to us, especially maybe before someone who is considered great. 17 says, The one who states his case first seems right until the other comes and examines him. This is more like in a court of law. The first person to speak in a court case seems to be correct until the cross-examination begins. And then the, the other side many times will come out. 18 says, The lot puts an end to quarrels and decides between powerful contenders. Now, now back in the the Old Testament times and even in the New Testament times, they had something they call lots. It's like, almost like throwing dice. And uh, God would use that lot to help people decide on this issue or that issue, something that was right or something wrong. And today we kind of have, a, I guess you'd say, like a flip of the coin. So a flip of the coin, in a sense, can end arguments. If you say heads or tails, let's say, and you tails, you lose, and heads I win. And this can settle disputes even between powerful opponents if it's used properly. Verse 19 says, A brother offended is more unyielding than a strong city, and quarreling is like the bars of a castle. An offended friend is harder to win back than a fortified city, it seems to say. And also, argument can separate friends like a locked gate with bars. And that's so true. There's, uh, there's so many times when we allow our emotions and our words to cause major problems in our lives. Verse 20 says, From the fruit of a man's mouth his stomach is satisfied, and he is satisfied by the yield of his lips. Wise words satisfy like a good meal. Boy, there's a lot of truth to that. If you can get some good wisdom... If somebody can tell you something that will make a great impact on your life and you're willing to hear and to listen and to go by that, it is uh, just so satisfying 
that you have done that. And in, in, in a sense, as we're talking about, this is the making of a wise person, a person who will listen, a person who absorbs and understands and then creates the knowledge for discernment. We've talked a lot about discernment, knowing right from wrong, this path for that path. And then God will give us the wisdom to know exactly where we should go. 21 says, death and life are the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruits. The words we use can bring life or death. Isn't that true? Words we use can be life or death. And those who love to talk will reap the benefits or the consequences of that. 22 says, He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. I put it this way, a loving spouse enhances your life and is a blessing from the Lord. And I think that goes either way. If you find a, a good companion in life, you're so blessed, and it is a favor from the Lord. Verse 23, the poor use entreaties, but the rich answer roughly. Well, the poor plead for mercy, while the rich answer with insults. There's a lot of truth to that, too. And then finally, in 24, a man of many companions may come to ruin but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. You know, a man may have many acquaintances, but a true friend is like a brother to him. And you know, uh, most people only have one, maybe two true friends, somebody that you can call on no matter what. And that kind of person is just like a blood brother to you. Well, as we continue on considering the words of Solomon, we need to always remember that these are the words that God has given to Solomon. So these are God's words. They're words that will help us or Proverbs that will help us in our life to have better understanding, to be able to walk as we should walk, as instructed by God, to have our life have meaning and purpose. And if we follow these things, and I think that's the whole reason that Solomon's talking to his sons and the Lord is speaking to us, these are common sense things. If we just but follow them, our life will be so much richer than it could be otherwise. Well, thank you for being here. Lord bless you, watch over you, and keep you. And I pray that, uh, that our God will guide your life's heart and be with you each and every step of the way until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen.